drive shaft! Today I'm working, it's Saturday, um, and any, any of these public utilities like a sewer plant or a water plant or anything like that, um, there has to be, depending on your size, uh, seven day a week coverage in some places is 24 hour day coverage and you're requiring shift work. We're just seven days a week, so it's my weekend to work. Um, I'm gonna get my effluent sample here. Just, uh, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the discharge part of a wastewater treatment facility. You have two permitted features in a sewer plant, right? You have, you have where it comes in, that's your influence, and then you have your effluent or what leaves the plant. So we are now at station 001A. It is an official designator registered with the state health department. It's got its own GPS coordinates and everything else. And uh, 001A happens to be right there. Basically, that's where we collect our effluent sample. Here is our automatic sampler or auto sampler. Right here. We have this tube. That tube comes out and drops down into the effluent. We take a composite sample, 24 hour composite sample. And basically, what that does is this auto sampler here is um, talking to our flow meter. The flow meter says, hey, this is what we got going on. Every certain amount of gallons leaving the plant or coming into the plant, every certain amount of gallons coming through the treatment process ticks off a signal to the sampler. And then the sampler will take a specified sample aliquot, uh, usually 250 mils, sometimes 500 mils, depending on what kind of samples we need for the laboratory that week. And different weeks are different volumes. So, it's inside there, it's a little uh, peristolic pump. And uh, that's where we get our weekly compliance samples from. I'm grabbing a daily grab sample. It's not a compliance sample, it's process control. But I was gonna show you our UV system. So, when we're treating sewage, Everything's really clean when it comes out, right? The water's clear. However, there could be microscopic bugs, little beasties we don't like left behind. And to make sure those are all dead, you run it through disinfection. Now, it used to be back in the day, everyone used chlorine. A lot of people still use chlorine, chlorine gas, chlorine liquid. Um, this particular facility used ozone at one point in time, but that that's obsolete. So now we use ultraviolet light for disinfection. So you can see bank A, bank B. And then on out. We are currently running bank A. I'll give you, get the camera down in there so you can see. Those are the bulbs. The bulbs produce the UV light, which then disinfects everything. Um, our water's pretty darn clear. Our turbidity's low. The treatment process is looking great. Which is really nice. I like that. Now EPA has a very distinct method 
for collecting samples. Everything that we do here has to be consistent and um, has to be the same to all match as closely as you can the, uh, the atmosphere you take them in. I don't know. I'm rambling, and when I'm rambling, I start forgetting words. So, but anyway, EPA, when they you take a sample, they say the sample bottle should be filled to the neck where it goes on this radius. So, pour a little out, we're good to go. Effluent sample, ready to go. All right, here we are in the lab gotta run daily labs like I said we gotta take samples and get stuff done and uh, state health department wants us to check for certain things every single day and then we run different things every single day for process control so we're gonna do turbidity right now lint free wipe And then when you're done with the sample, everything gets rinsed out with DI water. Three times. And in particular, lab glassware such as this, you fill with DI water. And that's how you store it. And always make sure you cap your sample bottle securely. Why do you cap your sample bottle securely? Well, I'll tell you why. So, whenever you take a sample out, you know, a little aliqua out to run somewhere, you always have to remix everything. So, you know, we, me, when I'm in the lab, and our lab SOP is three times. So, one, two, three. And some of us are a little more vigorous than others, but the standard is like a one, two, three. However, so it's not always nice, clear, effluent such as this. We'll do a lot of RAS, uh, return activated sludge sample, we'll do digester sludge sample. So you have a bottle like this, but it's full of like brown chocolate milky goop. So I've done this before and it's not fun at all because it's a giant mess and takes a lot to clean up after. So you're running through, you're doing a bunch of samples, you grab your bottle, you're like, all right, all right, ready for next sample. And you go one, and guess what? Your lid's not on tight, so when you go like this, you shoot brown juice all over the place, and it makes a giant mess. That's why in the lab, we write all, all of our bench sheets with permanent ink. My favorite is the Bic round stick, blue, medium point, but you want permanent ink because when you make a boo-boo like this, and liquid goes everywhere, and you've been using those nice gel pens to write down data in your bench sheets, well, now your bench sheets are wet and that data goes away. So has to be permanent ink. Little side note. So next, we're gonna run ammonia. Um, this, look, mind you, these are not compliance numbers I'm running. These are quick process control numbers. When we do a compliance day in the lab, do compliance ammonia, all that stuff, um, there's quite a bit more uh, quality control methods put into place. What I'm doing right now is just a quick, hey, I wanna peek in a window into what's happening in my process. So we use Hawk TNT reagent vials. And I'm gonna get my stuff. Got my pipette. And my pipette tip. So, Hawk wants, in this particular test chemistry, five mils of sample. So, we set to five mils. And whenever I'm using these, I always set these in such a way so my tip doesn't become contaminated with anything. Like I said, process, the process control is a lot more loosey-goosey, but when we're actually doing compliance, we're really careful, especially if we're doing a sensitive test like phosphorus. Um, phosphorus is really sensitive to outside, yeah, any kind of contaminants. So you gotta be really careful, really careful of your tip. You know, we're wearing gloves, stuff like that. So take the cap off. One. Mm. 
push the plunger in, release the plunger slowly. I click it to the next highest setting for delivery. Tip goes inside, slowly discharge my sample. One plunge, no. Remember, trying to stay consistent. We're gonna flip the reagent cap around. Shake it to get the reagent broken up and mixed it inside and set the timer for 15 minutes. Then we'll come back in 15 minutes and read it. Time's up. <clears throat> Time to read the TNT. Point zero three zero. That's what our ammonia is. Outstanding. Well, hello. It's eleven o'clock. I'm out of here at River Run. Got an alarm. High level alarm. We're gonna see what it is. Sounds like the pump's running, but the pump's not pumping. Yep, I can hear the VFD running. Well, that's really weird, folks, because the wet well level is at 3.1 feet. Let me get this door here, goodness. We're at 3.1 feet? The pump is running. Not sure what's going on. Well. That's not good. Let's go see what that says. Let's go see what that one is. Oh, would you look at that? Just dandy. It's not bad, but it's not good. This has happened a couple times before. Not the end of the world. But guess what? I'm gonna deal with it in the morning, not tonight. You win some, you lose some. Yeah, so remember how I said I'd deal with this in the morning? I'm actually dealing with it now. Simply because the sump alarm in here over there it's a uh, it is wired into the wet well high level alarm which is the pump pit over there so this goes off a little alarm every 30 minutes saying ooh wet well high level alarm which if that was the case we'd have a true emergency so I don't want to disable it for the night because if I have an actual emergency I need to know about it so I gotta get this dealt with um, but yes 2 a.m. haven't been to bed yet. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get a pump and get it set up in here, over there in the sump, and start dewatering this. And then uh, I'll clean it later, not tonight. I'm tired! <laughs> anyway, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. So yesterday, we had a bit of a fire. Uh, it ended up being 57 acres as a ditch burn that got away from the rancher and started moving pretty fast. It's pretty dry out, uh, you know, being December, uh, there's no snow on the ground, so everything's really, really dry. All the grasses and uh, willows and everything like that is pretty dry because it's winter time, right? Usually we got a foot of snow by now. Never in a million years did I think that I'd be working a wildland call on January 4th. Anyway, so that's what I was doing yesterday. Um, and it, with different things associated with that, ended up being out till about uh, 3 a.m. 
last this morning yeah this morning I'm kind of tired uh but uh yeah we had a few other things i had a few other things going on in the meantime some alarms here at the plant out at the lift station at river run um but uh yeah so i figured i'd fly the drone out there and get some footage of uh uh the burn scar and I did it just in the nick of time because the wind picks up around noon here. It's 11.30 and I landed the drone and sure enough, it's kind of windy. Um, anyway, so sit back, enjoy the ride, um, and enjoy a short flight out to the fire, the, the burn scar, and uh, enjoy. episode i had fun making it as usual i hope you have fun watching it with that cheesy exit thanks for watching and i will see you around like a donut <laughs>